Good morning, everyone. Thank you for taking the time to join me on such a beautiful morning. My goodness, I believe that summer is finally here for us. And um, we'll just take a moment and give a few others the opportunity to join in with us. And I'll see who we see. It. Well, good morning, Andrew. Good to have you join me this morning. Bethany, wow, good to have you join me this morning. We'll see who else comes up as I try to get this thing on my phone working. Let's see how it works here. Darla, good morning. Fanny, good morning. Good to have you join us this morning. There are others that are joining us, so that is good. Good. Let's see if I can. There we go. All right. Let's see who else is on this with us this morning. I don't know if your kids, this is your last day for school, but for a lot of kids, and especially high school kids, uh, summer is beginning. Charlene, good to have you join us this morning. Well, I want to get into the cup of faith that last week we began looking at eight keys to a blessed life by studying the Beatitudes. You know, you can always watch uh, cup of faith videos on our COG Moose Jaw church app or COG Moose Jaw YouTube channel or our Facebook page. Also, if these are a blessing to you, why don't you take a moment and share it with your family and friends? Last week, we we are look this week we are looking at Matthew chapter 5 verse 4 blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted life doesn't always work out the way we planned or even hoped for how many of you could say boy that is not the way it is the fact is there you know there are times in life where we have to face trials and tribulations and and suffering and sorrows and sometimes mourning really is the only appropriate response to what life throws at us a lot of people think that mourning is only about funerals and physical death but there are thousands of other losses in life you can lose your health and your job and, and money and home or dream the only appropriate response to the losses of life is not to fake it or cover it up, but to face it and to go through it. Mourning is the healthy way of dealing with loss and disappointments. Mourning is essential to my emotional, my spiritual, my physical, and my mental health. In fact, if you've never grieved about anything, it means one of two things. You're, not, you're out of touch with the reality because there is a lot of things that are wrong with the world today and the second thing is you're out of touch with your own emotions and you are living in denial grief is a painful emotion but it can also be a healthy and helpful emotion mourning is a gift god gives to us to get through the painful and disappointing transitions of life now there are two unhealthy reactions to the losses of life one is repression the other is suppression repression is when i unconsciously try to block a painful thought out of my mind suppression on the other hand is when i consciously try to block a painful thought out of my mind now both really are denials when you go through a tough time when you're hurting and uh, your heart is breaking god doesn't want you to suppress it or to repress it in fact god wants you to express it to your family and friends and he wants you to confess it to him now when you do that then you're really on the road to healing again jesus said blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted now how does god comfort me when i mourn now here are three ways God draws us close to him. Psalms 34, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and save those who are crushed in spirit. When we are grieving, often we feel like God's a million miles away. Maybe that's you today. 
what you're going through. It might be, not be a physical death, but the gr grieving, grieving uh, maybe a marriage situation, grieving maybe a, a relationship situation, or the loss of a dream, or even your own health. Grieving is something that we all have to face in our lives. And many times when we're going through those seasons, we wonder, God, are you even close to me? Sometimes we think he's a million miles away, but he's a lot closer to us than he realize. You might feel that way, but don't feed it. When you're mourning, don't feed on your feelings. Rather, feed on the word of God. Deuteronomy chapter 31 says, The Lord himself goes before you and will not and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Let me read that again. I just I just feel check in my spirit. That's that for that's for someone watching this today. The Lord Himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Secondly, God mourns with us. The reason you have the ability to mourn is because you are made in the image of God. Isaiah 53, describing Jesus, he said, He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. Jesus wept when he saw his friends Mary and Martha grieving over the death of their brother Lazarus. When Jesus cried with them, it showed them how much he loved them and Lazarus. Grief is an evidence of love. Thirdly, God uses family and friends to comfort us. I recently read, when you share a joy, it's doubled. And when you share a grief, it's halved. When you carry it all by yourself, you're carrying a load that God never intended for you to carry. First Corinthians chapter 12 says, and if one member suffers, all the other members suffer with it. If you've ever stumped your little toe, you quickly come to realize how one small little part of your body can, that pain can resonate all through your body. First Thessalonians 5 says this, so encourage each other and build each other the blessing that comes out of mourning is the comfort that we receive through Holy Spirit and through family and friends. As believers, the comfort we receive is empowering. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 says, God comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. Isn't that extraordinary? The blessing of being comforted is not only the comfort you receive, but equal important is now you are equipped and now you are empowered to bring comfort to others. Right now, you're in one of two positions. You are either needing comfort or you need to be comforting others. Sometimes we're in both because this is how powerful comfort is. When we're mourning, when we're mourning the loss, whatever it is that we're going through in our life, the Lord is near, the Spirit is in us. And the comfort we receive is so powerful that even in our moments of brokenness, we are vessels that can still be used of God to bring comfort and support to others. Our nation is poised to go into deep mourning over hundreds, possibly thousands of unmarked graves of Aboriginal children found at former residential school sites. Again, we're reminded why there is so much brokenness and pain in the Aboriginal community. They certainly need our prayers and our support. Jesus is weeping with them and, and we need to weep with them. We need to comfort them. And we need to do everything that we can to help our Aboriginal people. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. What are you mourning over in your life right now? I want you to know that there is comfort for you and there's comfort that can come out of you. 
as we see this chapter unfold in in our in our country of all of these unmarked graves being discovered the church has a significant part to play in bringing reconciliation i know especially uh, evangelical churches have been at a standoff on this but we really need to engage this process because the bible says that we are really ministers of reconciliation and we have comfort flowing through us from holy spirit to give to those that are hurting let me pray for you father we we thank you for your word today that has brought comfort to us to know that you're near to know that you experience what we've experienced and you weep with those that weep we thank you for the power of your spirit in our lives that gives us the power even in our brokenness to bring comfort to others and this morning as uh, right across this nation especially in our own province the discovery of so many unmarked graves lord we pray for our aboriginal people lord. we pray that you would comfort and you would bring reconciliation to that community and you would help us lord as individuals and certainly as cog musha that we would be play our part lord in bringing comfort to those that are hurting we pray this in jesus name amen thank you again so much for joining us i want to take this opportunity to invite you out to church uh, there's always going to be a spot for you if you please if you can register that will be good but we're getting really excited about uh, um the restrictions lifting for those that are ready to come back you know somebody said aren't you excited about uh, about reopening church well church has never been closed I just think it's just been amazing to see how our leadership team, our staff team have risen up and our church family to now build two platforms that we as COG Musha are a part of. We are part of an online platform and we are part of an in-person platform. Things like Cup of Faith, we're even going to increase that in the fall and and so that we will always be a, a church with two platforms the online and the in-person and we're looking forward to bringing you lots of exciting things but if you're ready to come back we're going to be welcoming you and if you're not ready you please join us online and invite someone god bless you enjoy the beautiful day that the lord has given to us uh, uh, you know i hate to remind people about this but uh, Ju June uh, 21st was the longest day of the year. It was when summer began and really every day now is going to get a little bit shorter. So don't put off anything. You go out there and you go after life. God bless you. Connie and I love you very, very much. And just uh, you're in our thoughts and prayers. God bless you.